ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما but as this is respect to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may allah give us sincerity to speak the truth in the light of the quran and the sunnah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to understand them to accept them in the hearts and to implement them in the life today's topic is a continuation of our previous series where we were discussing about what are the things that a muslim should learn of his deen and last time we have covered two main topics one was about allah and shaitan the second thing was about islam and other religion today inshallah as i have promised that today i will be discussing about the practical aspects of the muslim and a non muslim which means the lifestyle of a muslim and a lifestyle of a non muslim and it starts with only one point that a person as i said uh, I, the first time when i came to islam when i became muslim from an atheism born in a muslim family i asked myself two questions number one how i am different as abdul majid from my other friends who are non muslim who are claiming to be christians or hindus or someone else something else This was my first question. The second question was that if I am different then how I am different? In the sense that if I am a Muslim then who is a Muslim? Based on that I started my religion and I started studying about the deen. So this is the first thing. Now today's speech is all about who are serious Muslim. it is only the person who says that he is muslim and he is serious about that if a person is muslim only by name and he does habba wa dabba like arab says whatever he does and he doesn't care whether this should be done by a muslim or not then this speech definitely it will not help because the whole quran cannot help him where can i stand and try to help this kind of a person so this is very clear first of all when we are talking about muslims and non muslims it is it starts with many many points number 1 starts with the belief number 2 it starts with the pillars of iman number 3 it starts with pillars of islam number 4 it starts with social life number 5 it starts with private life number 6 that the life of uh, his style of his life compared to the style of the people of uh, uh, other faith number 7 is he different than other animals or he is like animal so all that kind of thing it goes into uh, understanding of the word muslim and a non muslim number 1 it is very simple there is somebody wants to say that i am muslim and if he says by la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah all the scholars of tafsir all the scholars of hadith and all the scholars of ahl sunnah wal jamaah it is the consensus of all of them that who says la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah he is muslim who says la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah he is muslim regardless of what he believes in his heart 
and what he does in his last time. So this is how the first concept we have to understand that anybody who says La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah so he is a Muslim. Now there is a hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which says that this Muslim who says La ilaha illallah who will go to Jannah? Because there is again criteria given by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says Man kana akhiru kalamihi La ilaha illallah Khalisatan min qalbihi This is the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is in Sunan Darmi that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Man kana akhiru kalamihi khalisat, La ilaha illallah khalisatan min qalbihi Dakhal al-jannah The one who says La ilaha illallah from his heart sincerely from his heart he will enter Jannah. This is the guarantee of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with regards to this person. So based on this it is very clear that the person who is a true Muslim he will say La ilaha illallah from his Heart. But do we have the power to check into the hearts of the people? No. So we have to stop here as the scholars of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'a says that if a person is sincere or he is not sincere, whether he is saying it from his heart or not, it's not our concern. If a person says La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, then end of the story, he is Muslim, by definition. According to the definition of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, there are three main uh, pillars of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That a person should say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah with his words, verbally. And it should be uh, announced in public because now today we know in Western countries there are Muslims who are dying and they were Muslims but they lived in their Hindu family or Christian family or non-Muslim family but they have not announced or pronounced their Islam in public so after their death it's a problem some of the brothers or families who knew about this person that he was Muslim but his own family didn't know that he was Muslim and they want to Com- complete the rituals of burial according to their faith and the Muslims who knew that this man was a Muslim but he has not openly said that he is Muslim they want him to be buried according to the Muslim rituals and this was I think last year it happened in Luton too that there was a family where a man was in a sick family he died but he was a Muslim and some Muslims of Luton they knew that he was a Muslim but this sick brother who became Muslim he didn't tell his family that he was Muslim and they wanted to criminate him or you know whatever they wanted to do with him but they were not willing to give the body to the Muslim and so this is the first condition that a person should say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah in public. Second thing, he should believe in his heart. Because Quran also defines a true Muslim and a Muslim by name who is Munafiq. A Muslim who believes in his heart about Islam and his declaration and a Munafiq he says with his mouth but he is hiding disbelief in his heart. So, this is the second condition. The person should be believing in his heart what he is declaring in public. And the third condition is, again, very serious. And this is not something from me. You can check any tafsir of, you know, any book of tafsir, any book of aqidah, any book of, you know, fiqh. You will find that these are the three criteria. The third one is for the person to be defined as Muslim and the definition of a Muslim or a definition of a believer that the third point is that he should be practicing what he believes. So, if a person says La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, what does that mean? It means that there is no authority to be worshipped except Allah. That means he is accepting that he should be worshipped. And how he should be worshipping? Muhammad Rasulullah because the messenger came from Allah 
to tell him that this is Allah and you have to worship him. So he has to follow the teaching of a messenger how to worship Allah. So this is what his declaration means here. So if a person says that La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, that means he is submitting, he is signing the contract, he is admitting that I believe in Allah and I will worship Allah. So this is the first criteria of Iman, Islam. That a person says with his mouth, believes in his heart and applies in his lifetime. Means practical aspect of it. <laughs> now when we come to the differences between Muslims and non-Muslims. Number one, Muslims believe, Muslims believe in Allah, Islam, Quran, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Non-Muslim does not believe in Allah, does not believe in Islam, does not believe in Quran, and does not believe in Muhammad Sallallahu So that comes with the creed, aqidah. Then we go to the branches of faith, Iman, pillars of Iman. Pillars of Iman, there are six pillars of Iman. A true Muslim, he believes in Allah, he believes in angels, he believes in books of Allah, he believes in messengers of Allah, he believes in the destiny decreed by Allah SWT, good and bad is all good and evil comes from Allah SWT, and he believes in the day of resurrection. The non-Muslim, he does not believe Allah as he should be believed. He may say he believes, he believes in God, one God, but the way he should be believing it is not the way it should be defined by God. Number two, not everybody who believes, even the Christians and Jews, they don't totally believe in all the angels that the Muslim believes. Because Quran speaks about Jibreel alayhi salam, that the Jews and the Christians used to hate him. Jews and the Christians used to hate Jibreel alayhi salam. And this is very famous hadith of the Warqa bin Nawfal in Sahih al-Bukhari. When Prophet Hassan described Jibreel for, for the first time, he said, I saw that of, uh, an angel with, you know, 600 wings on the right and left, and he came and he, see, he squeezed me and grabbed me like this. And so Warqa bin Nawfal said that this is one of the angels who always used to come to the prophets and messengers of Allah. And if you say this, that means you are going to be a messenger of Allah. And once you say that, then you are creating open enemies from the Jews and the Christians because they hate him. They know that this Jibril. So, coming back to the second point, that the non-Muslims, they do not believe in all the angels. They may believe in one or two. Allahu alam, who are they? Maybe those people who write Taweez, ask them because they always write the names of angels around the box that they make Taweez. So they might know who are these angels. So, the third, third thing, we believe in all the messengers of Allah, we believe in all the prophets of Allah. But, very common, the non-Muslim, he might believe in all the prophets and messengers, but he does not believe in Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. So, non-Muslims will not believe in all the prophets and messengers of Allah. The fourth point, we Muslims believe in all the books of Allah, all the books of Allah, by name we know that Torah, Zabur, Injil, and Quran, and other Surah of Ibrahim, Surah of Musa, all the other books, we Muslims all believe in that. And a non-Muslim, he may say that he believes in all the books, but definitely he does not believe in the Quran. So this is the difference between Muslims believing in the books of Allah and a non-Muslim believing in the books of Allah. Number th- uh, five, we as Muslims, we know that there is the day of judgment and that is the time when Allah SWT will resurrect all of us and we will be standing in front of Allah SWT and we will be answerable to that. Compared to the non-Muslims, many non-Muslims, they don't believe in the day of resurrection and this is uh, clearly mentioned in the Quran that people, they said that uh, if what you are saying that the people will be resurrected then it is not possible because it doesn't go into our head. Our ancestors, when they died, we never knew that any one of them woke up again after the death. 
So how can you say that the whole universe will be resurrected again? So they put lots of logical arguments to prove that there, is, there will not be any day of judgment. Same thing, if, if we believe that the Jews and the Christians also believe in the day of judgment, but it is not the way as it is understood by the final messenger, by the final book, which is in the Quran, how it is described. So we can say that this is the difference between the Muslims believing in the day of judgment and the non-Muslims believing in the day of judgment. In other words, Muslims believe in the day of judgment, non-Muslims do not really believe in the day of judgment. Last creed. Qadr. Good and evil, they both are the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they both are this, they're destined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how we Muslims see things. That if the good comes in our life, it's from Allah. The bad thing comes, from, uh, comes in our life is also from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are non-Muslims who believe that the good luck is in their rings. The good luck is in their threads that they wear. The good luck they have, they believe in their ta'weez that they wear. Muslims wear ta'weez and they look for the good luck. And the Christians wear cross to look for the good luck. Not all of them. Again, Peter and Rob will put the question to me. No, we don't believe in that. Okay. Alhamdulillah. But generally we see how the people are. People, they believe in the stones. People, they believe in the stars. For the good luck and bad luck. People believe in, uh, you know, the cards. People believe in the uh, date of the, the date of birth. People, they believe in the month they were born, year they were born, day they were born. And this is how the people are. So, this is very clear. The Muslim believes that Qadr is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Good comes from Allah, bad comes from Allah. And this is how we have to accept it. The second point, that the Muslims are different from non-Muslims, is based on the seven, the five pillars of Islam. After you have said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, now you are Muslim. How serious you are, that is between you and Allah. But since you said you are, you are saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, so you can be Abdul Majid as a Muslim, and now you became Muslim. After that, the non-Muslims will never say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, so he is not a Muslim. So this is the first difference in the five pillars of Islam. Muslims will say, practicing Muslim or non-practicing Muslim will say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and the non-Muslim will not say that. Muslims will pray five obligatory prayers daily, or five obligatory prayers. Up and down, it's between him and Allah. But this is what is required of a true Muslim, that he must be praying five obli daily obligatory prayers. Non-Muslims have their own theology and their own method. They might be praying maybe once, maybe twice, maybe five times, maybe whole life, whole, every day, 24-7. But what is required of the Muslim is that they have to pray five daily prayers. And this is the difference between a Muslim and a non-Muslim, that Muslim will pray five daily prayers, obligatory prayers, and non-Muslim will not pray like that. When it comes to charity, zakat, Muslim, he knows that the condition of giving zakat and condition for the reward to be accepted and given to for the person gives zakat, the first condition is that the wealth should be halal. Like in Manchester, somebody called a sheikh and he said, I, got, I won the lottery and it is like one million pounds or something like that. So, uh, is it halal for me? The Mulvi sahab said to him, that if you give me 50% of that, I'll, I'll tell you it is halal for you. So now, zakat of halal earning is the condition. So the true Muslim, first of all, before being eligible to pay zakat, he should be first a true Muslim earning halal money. If his money is not halal, even if it is 1% of it, then it is as good as, now pay attention to this, we are thinking, oh, no, Chalta, Allah is merciful and this and that. Our zakat will not be accepted, even if we donate, you know, the millions of our wealth. But if it is, it has to be purely halal income. And it is same as, for an example, you have a big gallon of honey. Four liters, five liters gallon of honey. 
and you have one drop of urine, one drop, maybe one millimeter, one ml, one milliliter. You mix it with the honey. It won't pollute the honey. It won't make it impure. But who is amongst us will accept this honey. Practical example. Five gram of five kilogram or five gram of honey mixed with one ml of drop of urine. Nobody will accept it if you know it. So how can you expect from Allah to accept your wealth, which He has got haram earning? In Allah Taibun la yaqbulu illa Taib. Allah is pure and Allah will always accept something which is pure. If Allah, there is no room for Allah to, you know, compromise with the impure wealth. So, a true Muslim, with regards to the charity, how is it different from kafir, a non-Muslim? That a true Muslim will make his earning halal. And if he has got the saving, halal saving, and he is eligible to pay zakat, then he knows that this is one of the obligations that Allah has put upon him. As a Muslim, he has to pay zakat every year. A certain percent of whatever the saving is, 2.5%. This is the difference that the kafir does not have to pay zakat. And also the difference is that if you as a Muslim, you pay all your wealth in charity, but you are not concerned about the zakat, then your charity will not be accepted because charity is not compulsory, zakat is compulsory. This is how uh, the difference between a Muslim giving zakat and a non-Muslim not giving zakat. <coughs> Finally, we go, by, go to fasting. In the previous history of the mankind, the Jews used to fast. Christians used to fast. Hindus used to fast. The same thing continued, the same principle continued, even Prophet Muhammad ﷺ introduced fasting to the Muslims. And for Muslims, the obligatory fast is that in a year, once in a year, one month, complete month of Ramadan, he has to fast, whether it is 29 days of Ramadan or 30 days of Ramadan, he has to fast from dawn to sunset. And that too, this is the difference between a Muslim fasting and a non-Muslim not fasting the way it should be fasted. Then we go for Hajj. Again, Hajj issue is very clear. A true Muslim, he knows that once in his lifetime, the Hajj is compulsory. Once in his lifetime. So a true Muslim will try to qualify himself for that. And again, here too, halal wealth is the condition. You can be a millionaire and billionaire and trillionaire. You can even cover the cost of all the pilgrims who are performing Hajj. But if it is not from halal money, your money is wasted. There, even you have spent on them or you spend on yourself, the, your Hajj will not be accepted. This is one of the conditions that for Hajj also, this is a condition your wealth should be halal. And you should be eligible. There are terms and conditions for the Muslim to go for the Hajj. Non-Muslims, they don't have to go for Hajj. Once in a year, maybe sometimes the Pope in Italy, in Spain, in Rome, he appears and people go and visit him. And once in the last time, the Hindus go to Mount Everest on the top and they do their worship. Sometimes they go and do the bathing in the Ganges River. So this, this kind of a concept, but for a Muslim, he is... Uh, it is obligatory upon him to perform the Hajj once in his lifetime. The non-Muslim does not need that. So this is six pillars of Iman which Muslims have to believe and six pillars of Iman which non-Muslims they do not believe in it. So that's the difference between Iman of a Muslim and Iman of a Kafir. Islam, five pillars of Muslim, Muslim has to ab uh, abide by that and if he is not abiding by that then he is there, there's no difference between him and a non-Muslim. So this is a Muslim who has to do this and a non-Muslim who does not do that. He also has to do that because he is created by Allah. And Allah said in Surah Zariyat, chapter 51, verse 56, 
wa ma khalaqtu jinna wal insa illa liya'budun that i have created the whole jinn the whole uh, world of jinn and i have created the whole mankind all of them muslims non muslims everybody to worship me so we are all created to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if we don't then we are worshiping shaitan that i have already covered in my first khutbah in this series now then we go into another life the lifestyle practical lifestyle of a muslim and a non muslim aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum ان الحمد لله نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد now the practical life of a muslim and a practical life of a non muslim as i said that the word is very simple and very serious muslim does not mean muslim by name abdul majid father ali mother zainab so he became muslim no muslim the word muslim i quoted from the verses of ibrahim alayhi salam the story of ibrahim alayhi salam the story of musa alayhi salam the story of yaqub alayhi salam the story of uh, ishaq and ismail and the story of prophet muhammad alayhi salam and i also quoted the ayat where rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to say every time in his speech that a muslim should live as a muslim and he should die as muslim so this is a very serious thing if a person he saying i'm muslim and he does what the non muslims are doing then it is between him and allah i'm not here to give you the fatwa that he is not a muslim if he says la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah it is between him and allah whatever he does after that but let's see the practical life now this is very serious my brothers and sisters people they think okay what i'm going to tell you now it's only mulvis have to do that what people if i tell you what how the muslim's lifestyle is different than the non muslim people will say oh look he is becoming mulla oh mulvi hai sufi hai hey, this is mulvi have to do that i will never tell you about the appearance no i will not say you are muslim because you have beard no i will never say that you are not muslim because you don't have the beard no i will never tell you that you are wearing pants and trousers and jeans and you are not muslim you have to be wearing a thobe like this no this is not what is practically known the difference between the muslim and a non muslim is how he starts his day how he ends his day with the consciousness of allah if you don't know who is allah you start your day in the name of pop you start your day in the name of your singer you start your day with smoking you start your day scratching and whistling so this is how now you have to ask that who are you according to the definition a muslim he starts his day remembering allah he ends his day remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he he is conscious of allah ittaqillaha haythu ma kunt this is the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to muad Nobody doubts the iman of Muaz. Nobody can say Muaz was heedless. Fil ghafla. He was in coma. He didn't know about Allah. No. But look, Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying, "Ya Muaz, ittaqillah haythu ma kunt wa atbi' as-sayyi'at al-hasanah tatamhuha wa khaliq an-nas bi khuluq hasan." O Muaz, wherever you are, in public or in private, fear allah so this is the first thing and my brothers and sisters if we are conscious of allah wallahi 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 if you are conscious of allah no harm can ever put you down no harm can ever put you down nothing even the death cannot scare you because you know that even death comes with the permission of Allah the harm comes with the permission of Allah the good comes with the permission of Allah you are successful because Allah made you successful you are failure because Allah made you that you are ill because Allah made you that you are healthy because Allah made you that you are wealthy because Allah made you that you can speak because Allah gave you the power of speech you can see because Allah so this is how you are when you have a, you are conscious of Allah from the day when you start your day and you are conscious of Allah when you end your day this is how is this is the difference between a muslim and a non muslim
how he starts his day. This is very simple. I can say, yes, I, oh, I say, Bismillah and I wake up. No. A Muslim, when he sleeps, before the sleep, he is what he should be doing. Maybe this could be my last night. Maybe this could be my last sleep. Maybe I won't wake up. So what should I do? My wife is sleeping next to me. My husband is sleeping next to me. Maybe I have upset her or upset him. So before I go to bed, I should say, please forgive me. Maybe my children are in the next room. I might have upset them. I might have done zul on them, zulm on them. I should go and ask them to forgive me. Maybe this is my last night. Maybe I won't wake up. Maybe I have maybe cheated or abused a Christian man, a Hindu man, or maybe had a sexual relationship or raped a woman. Maybe this is my last night. I won't wake up. So the believer, a Muslim, when he sleeps, when he goes to bed, he recalls everything. Allahu Akbar, our salaf, our salaf, our ancestors in the past, they would even count the words that they have spoken in the whole day. They would count before going to sleep. On the bed they would count the words that they have spoken and they would try, try to correct themselves. There is a hadith of Rasulullah Rasulullah said about one man that he is Muslim and he is a man of Jannah. If somebody wants to see him, look at this man. A Sahabi is saying, I want to see why Prophet said that this man is Muslim. And he Prophet said many times about him in public. So one of the Sahabi, he was conscious about knowing him. Why? Why this man, you know, Prophet is praising him so much. He asked his permission, brother, can I spend one night with you in your house? He gave him the permission, okay. He watched him. This man who is the man who told that he was going the glad tiding he will go to Jannah, the good man I can say, the word good, remember that. He just went home, this man was with him, a sahabi watching him, he slept and he woke up for the fajr, came out and he did his normal deeds. So this man who was watching him, he thought, <laughs> he has done nothing. What he has done? Why Prophet is saying that he is a man of Jannah? He said, okay man, can you please give me a chance to spend one more night with you in your house? He said, yes. The next day, next night he did the same thing. He was shocked. He thought, okay, maybe this man is doing something on particular day or particular night. So he asked one more time the permission to spend the night with him. Afterwards, he saw that this man is doing nothing. He is simple. He is sleeping and waking up for the project, goes out, does all the things that he has to do, and then he comes back. So this man could not resist, and he said, please tell me how, <laughs> why Prophet has said this thing about you. Tell me something what you do. Say so it is something special that you must be doing. That's why Prophet has given the guarantee for you to go to Jannah. He said, Wallahi, I don't do anything special. All I do is when I go before going to sleep, I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to forgive me, and I clean my heart from the grudge against anybody in the world, and I sleep. We are planning for the next morning who to be cheated, who to be looted, who to be betrayed, who to be abused, who to be tricked. This is we plan before we go to bed. And we don't know whether we'll wake up or not. But look this man. So this is how a Muslim, he starts his day and he ends his day. If a Muslim is not like that, if a Muslim, subhanallah. I'll give you one more example. Sheikh Uthaymi rahmatullah was asked once. Sheikh, there is a man, he cannot resist from watching television while he is fasting. So somebody advised him that if you are, you know, doing this haram while you are fasting, your fast will be, you know, won't get any reward. So somebody advised him, you know, just to sleep. 
You know, Shaykh Uthaymin said, if you sleep with this intention for the whole day and you just do your uh, obligatory issues in the fasting, Allah will reward you even for your sleeping because you are sleeping to avoid haram. So my brothers and sisters, this is the life of a Muslim. A Muslim, he starts with the day with the name of Allah, being conscious of Allah. And as I told you, the hadith says, even the bones, all the limbs are requesting the tongue that we fear Allah with regards to ourselves, 360 bones and the joints of our body. They request the tongue that we are Allah with regards to ourselves. If you are straight, we will be straight. And if you are not straight, we will not be straight. And this will take us to Jahannam. So this is how the Muslim starts his day. He starts with his day with Iman. And then all that he does, doesn't care for others. He does what is required of a Muslim to do. That is how it, he is different from a non-Muslim and for that we have to have a knowledge and my brothers you don't have to be alim you don't have to spend seven years in Medina to become an alim to know what you have to do in the you know bed to bed believe me there's a book it's like a booklet not my book okay I'm not promoting my book but people might be thinking Abdul Majid wants to promote his book no it's not my book it's a book written by I think a lady or translated by a lady, a day with the Prophet ﷺ, a day with Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, <coughs> subhanallah. And this little booklet, this booklet will tell you how you can start your day and how you end up your day. And my brothers and sisters, the practical life, Muslims, he worships Allah. Non-Muslims will not worship Allah. Muslim, he is true in his speech. A non-Muslim will not be like that. Maybe he is, but still, the criteria for that to be accepted is different. A Muslim will not fornicate. A Muslim will not cheat. A Muslim will not kill. A Muslim will not do haram deliberately. A Muslim, his Iman, he will try all the time, he will take special nourishment special, you know, energy drink that could, you know, boost his iman all the time. A non-Muslim is not of that type. Muslim, when he speaks, he'll be worried. Muslim, when he sees, he'll be worried because Allah is watching him. Muslim, when he touches something, he will be worried because Allah is watching him. Muslim, when he walks, he knows that Allah is watching him. Muslim, 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 this is how the life of a Muslim, he is different than other people. And this is divided into your private life, your social life. Private life is between you and Allah. Whether you are in the toilet, whether you are on the bed, you are in the room, in the office, wherever you are. That's between you and Allah. Your social life, your parents, your wife and your husband, your brothers and sisters, your children, your teamwork, team, workers, employers and employees. This is how you are. This is your social life. And Rasul Sallallahu has said very clearly لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه A person cannot be a true believer, a person cannot be a true Muslim unless he loves for others what he loves. So this is the criteria. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi has said المسلم من سلم المسلمون من لسانه ويده حديث صحيح بخاري المسلم a true Muslim is a Muslim who protects other people from the harm that could cause his tongue and his hands. Clear. Prophet said, Man minna. The one who cheats others is not one of us. The one who takes riba is not one of us. The one who takes bribes is not one of us. And Quran says, Cooperate with the people in fearing God and bringing close to God some things that will boost your Iman and don't cooperate with the people that will you know uh, degrade your Iman and lead you to uh, unlawful things 
very clear this is these are the simple principles of the life and as i said that for you people wallahi if i get hold of that book inshallah next friday i will buy all those copies and i'll give it to you fi sabilillah and you read that a day with the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is how you will be different than the other people and believe me my brothers and sisters i was 14 years old i saw a dream because i was an imaginary person i never believed in allah but i was an imaginary person i was like a, a naturist i used to observe nature and a night just give me i'll one story inshallah a night i was sleeping and i was wishing that i should be in a place where it is all peaceful land and i i have written that small article in my school days and it was published believe me my brothers and sisters if we know how a muslim should be spending his day from bed to bed wallahi you will change this world into jannah and non muslims will be you know willingly loving lovingly will come wholeheartedly will come and stay with you and no media will have any guard or uh, power to say against anything against islam non muslims will defend islam but what is needed the difference between a muslim and a non muslim inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala an-nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina 